What if I told you that the corporate structure you work in impacts not just your pocket but the entire socioeconomic fabric of our society? Interesting, isn't it? Now let's unravel this intriguing concept. Corporate structures, the hierarchical arrangement of positions within a company, are not just about who reports to whom. They are the gears that drive the economic engine of our society. From the CEO at the top to the entry-level worker at the bottom, each rung on the corporate ladder plays a crucial role in shaping the economic landscape. Picture this. The CEO of a large corporation decides on a strategy that leads to massive profits. These profits then trickle down the corporate ladder, impacting the pay and benefits of every employee. The ripple effect of these decisions reaches far beyond the company's walls. It influences the spending power of each employee, their lifestyle, and ultimately, their position in the socioeconomic strata of our society. Now let's think about socioeconomic classes. These are essentially economic and socio-cultural divisions within a society, often based on income, education, and occupation. Here's the catch though, these classes are not static. They are dynamic, constantly being shaped and reshaped by forces such as corporate decisions and economic policies. So, you see, the corporate structure you work in doesn't just determine your salary or job title. It has a profound impact on where you stand in society. It influences the car you drive, the neighborhood you live in, and even the schools your children attend. It's a complex web of interconnections that shape our lives in ways we often don't realize. And here's the kicker. While the corporate structure and socioeconomic classes might seem like separate entities, they are inextricably linked. The decisions made at the top echelons of corporate power have a direct bearing on the distribution of wealth and resources in society, influencing the socioeconomic classes. So, dive in with us as we unravel the deep-seated connections between corporate structures and socioeconomic classes. Corporate structures aren't merely hierarchies in the workplace, they are the pillars that uphold economic dynamics. Let's dive into the world of corporate structures, dissecting their forms, and understanding their influences on power and resource distribution. First up is the hierarchical structure, the most traditional form of organization. It's like a pyramid, with a single point of power at the top cascading down into various levels of management, each with decreased authority. This structure is clear-cut, easy to navigate, but can sometimes limit employee autonomy and creativity. Then we have the flat structure, a more modern, less rigid form. It eliminates or reduces levels of middle management, promoting direct communication and collaboration. Employees often enjoy more autonomy and responsibility. However, this might blur the lines of authority and slow down decision-making. Next, the matrix structure, a hybrid model. It combines both vertical and horizontal flows of authority and communication. Employees report to two managers, one from the functional unit and another from the project or product team. This dual reporting can lead to conflicts but also promotes flexibility and balanced decision-making. Lastly, there's the networked structure, a web of relationships rather than a rigid hierarchy. It's all about collaboration and partnership, both internally and externally. It can foster innovation and adaptability, yet it may also lead to ambiguity and lack of clear accountability. Now imagine these structures as a stage where the play of power and resources unfolds. In a hierarchical structure, power and resources flow from the top down, often concentrating wealth at the top. In contrast, flat and networked structures aim to distribute power and resources more evenly, potentially leading to a more equitable wealth distribution. However, it's crucial to remember that no structure is inherently good or bad. Each has its pros and cons, and their effects on economic dynamics can vary based on other factors like corporate culture, industry norms, and economic policies. The type of corporate structure can significantly influence the economic status of individuals and, by extension, socioeconomic classes. Next, we'll delve deeper into how these corporate structures impact socioeconomic dynamics. Now, how exactly does a corporate structure translate into socioeconomic impact? A question many ponder but few truly explore. Let's dive into the heart of the matter. Corporate structures with their varying degrees of hierarchy and job roles have a direct bearing on wages. In a flat corporate structure where there are fewer levels between management and employees, the wage gap tends to be smaller. This is due to the closer proximity of employees to the top, which often results in a more equitable distribution of income. Conversely, in a tall corporate structure, the wage gap often widens, with those at the top earning significantly more than those at the bottom. 
This wage disparity can translate into socioeconomic inequality, with those earning higher wages having more opportunities for wealth accumulation. Job security is another factor influenced by corporate structures. A company with a more stable structure, marked by clear roles and responsibilities, can offer employees a higher level of job security. This stability can contribute to socioeconomic security, as employees are more able to plan for the future, invest, and save. However, in less stable corporate structures, job insecurity can lead to socioeconomic instability, with employees living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to make ends meet. Opportunities for advancement also play a crucial role. In a corporate structure with clear career paths and opportunities for growth, employees can aspire to climb the corporate ladder, improving their socioeconomic status over time. However, in structures where opportunities are limited or unclear, employees may find themselves stuck in a cycle of low-wage work, unable to break free from their current socioeconomic status. In conclusion, it's clear that corporate structures don't exist in a vacuum. They have tangible effects on wages, job security, and opportunities for advancement, which in turn influence the socioeconomic status of individuals and communities. The ripple effects of corporate structures are far-reaching, influencing the socioeconomic landscape in more ways than one might imagine. Let's shift gears and discuss another crucial aspect. Corporate pay structures. Now these structures are not just about determining how much a person takes home at the end of the day, they are about how wealth is distributed within an organization, and by extension, within society. Firstly, we have the wage equality model. This is where everyone from the CEO to the janitor earns the same wage. It's a model that's rare in practice but serves as an interesting thought experiment. It's a model that could, theoretically, decrease income inequality and foster a sense of unity and shared purpose within a company. However, critics argue that it may demotivate those in more demanding roles and stifle ambition. On the other end of the spectrum we have the wage disparity model. This is where pay is tied to the perceived value of a role. Hence a CEO earns significantly more than a janitor. This model is far more common in today's corporate world. While it incentivizes individuals to strive for higher positions, it also contributes to the creation and perpetuation of wealth gaps within the company and subsequently, within society. And then there are models that fall somewhere in between offering a balance between equality and incentive. For instance, some companies cap the highest salaries, ensuring that no one earns more than a certain multiple of the lowest wage. Others offer profit-sharing schemes, ensuring everyone benefits when the company does well. The key point to understand here is this. A company's pay structure doesn't just affect the individuals within that company, it affects the wider society. When a CEO takes home a hundred times more than their lowest paid employee, that wealth disparity is reflected in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our public services. The way a corporation chooses to distribute its wealth among employees can significantly shape socioeconomic classes. It's clear that corporate structures and pay models aren't just about business, they're about society. As we've journeyed through this discussion, we've seen how corporate structures, from the smallest startups to the largest multinational corporations, are intimately tied to the socioeconomic classes we see in society. The stratified nature of corporate hierarchies, with executives at the top and hourly workers at the bottom, mirrors the divisions we see in our broader socioeconomic landscape. The pay models prevalent in corporations further exacerbate this divide. Executives often earn exponentially more than their subordinates, creating a wealth gap within corporations that reflects the wealth disparities we see in society at large. This isn't just a matter of fairness within a single organization. It's a trend that, when repeated across countless corporations, shapes the very structure of our society. But what if things could be different? What if corporations adopted more egalitarian structures and pay models? Some businesses are already experimenting with this idea, flattening their hierarchies and introducing more equitable pay scales. These changes don't just impact the corporations themselves, they have the potential to ripple outwards, influencing the socioeconomic classes in our society. Imagine a world where a janitor's wage isn't dozens or hundreds of times less than a CEO's, but merely a few times less. A world where the lowest paid employee in a corporation still earns a living wage, allowing them to live with dignity and participate fully in society. Such a world isn't just a dream, it's a possibility, if corporations are willing to rethink their structures and pay models. But it's not just on corporations. Policymakers too have a role to play in encouraging more equitable corporate practices. 
From tax incentives for corporations that adopt fair pay models, to regulations that promote transparency and executive compensation, there are many tools at our disposal to nudge corporations towards a more equitable future. Remember, the corporate world isn't separate from society, it's a vital part of it, and the choices corporations make can have profound impacts on the socio-economic fabric of our world. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.